Hi, my name is Sean Kavanagh and I'm a PhD student in the groups of David Scanlon at University College London and Aaron Walsh at Imperial College London. And my research uses modelling techniques to understand and optimise solid state energy materials. I particularly focused on solar photovoltaics, looking at bulk properties as well as more material specific behaviour such as defect and disorder. Today, I'm going to speak about our recent work revealing strong exotonic behaviour in the emerging class of vacancy ordered titanium perovskite, finally resolving long standing discrepancies between theoretical predictions and experimental measurements of these materials, posing important implications for this material class and demonstrating the crucial importance of structural connectivity and frontier orbital chemistry for materials design approaches in the field of perovskite inspired materials. The major research efforts have been devoted towards the discovery, design, and development of so-called perovskite-inspired materials. We aim to replicate the exceptional optoelectronic performance of the lead-based perovskite while overcoming their infamous toxicity and stability pitfalls. One such material class which has emerged is that of vacancy-ordered perovskites, or vacancy-ordered double perovskites, with the chemical formula A2MX6. In this structure, the perovskite AMX3 motif is doubled and the divalent metal cation, i.e. lead, is partially replaced by a tetravalent cation, such as tin or titanium, with 50% left of the cation sites left unoccupied in order to satisfy charge balance. Some of the key properties of this material class are that we retain the cubic perovskite crystal structure with the MX6 octahedral motif. We have a non-toxic composition, as well as now fully oxidized cations, affording much greater or uh, much improved thermodynamic stability over the partially oxidized MS2 lone pair cations in the prototypical lead, tin, or germanium perovskite. These materials are synthesized in solution, of course, one of the main selling points of perovskites, whether as nanocrystals or thin films. And crucially, the substitution and alloying of both the M cation and the X halide anion by a solution growth affords a ready tunability of the optoelectronic properties of these materials, which is a key strategy in our materials design toolkit. And thus far, these materials have shown a record solar cell efficiency of 3.3%, with this relatively modest performance thus far attributed to the relatively recent emergence and investigation of this class the weak visible light absorption and relatively low open circuit voltage. In this work, we focused on the tin and titanium based polymorphs, as these have shown the most promise for potential application and photovoltaic absorbers. Looking closer at the structural properties, we can see that this 50% occupation of the cation site results in these isolated MX6 octahedra with a zero dimensional crystal structure. Consequently, one might expect relatively low effective electronic dimensionality and mobilities in this material. Moreover, this zero dimensional structure suggests that the material is likely to behave akin to a molecular salt in many ways, with the properties governed by the short range MX6 metal to ligand environment rather than long range band like interactions. This suggests that intermolecular interactions are likely to be significant in these materials. Additionally, another consequence of the high symmetry cubic centrosymmetric structure, in addition to the fully oxidized cations, we now have a metal S or D conduction band rather than the metal P conduction band in a typical lead or tin perovskite, results in a partially forbidden transition at the direct band gap. And so the optical band gap, or the first allowed electronic excitation, is around 0.2 to 0.4 electron volts above the direct band gap, depending on the composition. So regarding these intermolecular interactions I was alluding to, in our calculations reveal significant dispersion or van der Waals binding between the octahedra and this molecular crystal structure. And we've also found this to be the case for the related zero dimensional material families such as the A4 MX6 uh, compounds, which are receiving a lot of attention as emerging white light emitters. These attractive interactions are found to significantly reduce the calculated lattice constants as expected, and we can see here that they greatly reduce the DFT prediction errors in the literature from around 3% to just less than 1%, which 
with an average slight underestimation as we expect because of the exclusion of thermal expansion in these geometry relaxations. Moreover, this lattice contraction has a significant effect on the electronic structure, uh, tending to reduce the band gap energies. And so these results demonstrate the necessity to account for these interactions in theoretical models of this and related zero-dimensional compounds. Some trends just to note here are that, as expected, the lattice constant increases as we move down the halogen periodic group from chlorine to bromine to iodine and is smaller for the titanium compounds due to the smaller ionic radius compared to tin. Looking then at the electronic structure, the key factor here is the substitution of the partially oxidized divalent cation with a fully oxidized tetravalent metal. I'm going from our prototype uh, halide perovskites to these vacancy ordered structures. So now, instead of having our valence band maximum derived from an antibonding interaction between the filled metal subshell and anion P states, we now have a non bonding halide P VVM giving significantly reduced band dispersion and thus heavier whole masses. This also means that the conduction band is no longer comprised of metal P states, but now either the valence S or D states. For the tin polymorphs, the diffuse S orbitals shown here give rise to disperse interactions with the halide P states and thus low electron effective masses. Uh, below we can see the localized iodine P states at our VDM. We show here in red the parity forbidden direct electronic band gap, and in green the first direct allowed transition, which corresponds to our optical band gap. Looking then at the titanium polymorphs, the same considerations apply for the valence band with heavy hull masses, but now our conduction band is derived from titanium D orbitals, which are very weak interactions with the halide P states and give rise to these very flat electron bands with heavy carrier masses. Looking at the charge density of our conduction band minimum, this strong real space localization is apparent. Analysis of the conduction band orbital character and symmetry reveals that the density of state peaks indeed correspond to the T2G and EG molecular orbital states that we'd expect from crystal field theory for an octahedral titanium complex, again highlighting the molecular nature of this family. When calculating with hybrid density functional theory, including spin over coupling effects, which are typically quite accurate in predicting semiconductor band gaps, we find good agreement for the optical gaps of each of the tin based compounds. We also witness the typical trend of decreasing band gap as we move down the halide periodic group uh, from the small electronegative chlorine to the more diffuse iodine. However, for the titanium family, we find a consistent and severe overestimation of the band gap. And indeed, this overestimation is witnessed in all theoretical studies in the literature and has not yet been addressed. In many cases, semi-local DFT, which is well known to greatly underestimate electronic band gaps, has been used in order to give fortuitous error cancellation and thus predicted gaps in agreement with experiments. However, in our work, we show that this yields qualitatively incorrect absorption profiles and electronic structure. So overall, these findings suggest the presence of some physical behavior, which is not accounted for in our standard single particle DFT model. Understanding the origin of this behavior and thus accurately modeling the absorption profile of these compounds would be crucial to assessing the potential of these materials in solar cell applications. So reminding ourselves of the electronic structure of the titanium polymorphs, and particularly these flat electronic bands, concomitant uh, heavy carrier masses, and strong real space localization of the carrier wave functions, we can see that electron hole excitonic interactions are likely to be significant in these materials. So, to investigate this, we moved beyond DFT to the computationally demanding GW approximation, which is often considered to be the state of the art for semiconductor band gap prediction. And in fact, in this case, we find an even worse overestimation compared to experiment, which was also noted by Suko et al. from the group of George Volonakis and Wren. Explicitly including electron hole interactions by the beta saltpeter equation, however, we witness a major reduction in the absorption onset energy and a spectrum now in excellent agreement with experiment. The remaining mismatch at higher energies is likely due to thermal effects where vibrations will break the symmetry restrictions 
of dark exotonic transitions and shifting the spectral weight into this region. These exciton states correspond to highly localized Frankel charge transfer exitons with the hole localized um, on the halide anions and the electron wave functions, uh, or, I'm sorry, and the electron on the metal center. This is confirmed by the fast band plot here, where the contribution of the hole and electron wave functions to the exciton wave packet is illustrated by the marker radius, uh, where in blue, is the whole states uh, or BBM, and in orange, the electron states are at conduction band minimum. The fact that we witnessed near constant strong contributions across the brillium zone in this case, uh, and thus a delocalization in reciprocal space, corresponds to a strong localization in real space and thus a localized Frankel exciton matrix. Similar results are obtained for the bromide and chloride titanium compounds, where again, improved agreement with the experimental absorption profile and strong localized Frankel exitons are witnessed. Looking at the tin polymorphs, we find qualitatively different behavior with dominant contribution at gamma corresponding to delocalized vanier mott type exitons. As we move to the chloride, however, uh, we start to see intermediate behavior due to the much larger band gap and flatter bands. And so in this case, uh, we also find a marked improvement in the calculated absorption spectrum uh, when, when including exciton binding. In summary, we reveal qualitatively different electronic structure and absorption behavior between the tin and titanium analogs of this family, where strong structural and electronic localization in the titanium compounds results in significant exciton binding dominating the low energy absorption range. For the tin iodide and bromide, on the other hand, the disperse S conduction band avoids these effects with weak vanier mott exciton behavior. These qualitative differences arise despite the same crystal structure and cation valence in these compounds, with the only difference being the frontier orbital character, thus demonstrating the crucial importance of accounting for these chemical effects when employing ionic substitution within materials design strategies. Before wrapping up, I should mention that there remain some issues in the quantitative theoretical modeling of the electronic structure of these compounds. The combination of correlated localized d orbitals with significant vacant space in the crystal structure makes these compounds extremely challenging to accurately model as it yields major underscreening of electron hole interactions, as shown here on the right, um, in the random phase approximation, which is employed within the GW approach. This means we actually require vertex corrected GW calculations, which um, self consistently include electron hole screening effects and have only recently been developed, uh, but their imp implementation in computational packages is still in progress. So, to wrap up, in this work, we show the highly localized, isolated MX6 octahedra in the vacancy ordered perovskites yield molecular like behavior with significant van der Waals uh, dispersion interaction. The isovalent substitution of tin with titanium results in qualitatively different optical behavior, which has led to consistent and severe overestimations of the band gap in theoretical works. Extending our model beyond DFG to include electron hole interactions, we reveal strong exciton binding to be the origin of this long-standing discrepancy. We believe this work serves as an important demonstration of the need to consider orbital character when employing ionic substitution materials design approaches, something which has been overlooked in many cases in the search for candidate perovskite inspired materials, as well as explaining some of the limitations of uh, improving efficiencies within this material class. Finally, to finish, I'd like to thank my supervisors, Professor Aaron Walsh and David Scanlon, for the brilliant support and guidance of the last two and a half years of my PhD, as well as our collaborators in Barcelona, Spain, who synthesized the compounds and measured their absorption. Thank you very much for your attention.